Today, we're gonna take a look at Vatterer's 12 volt, 460 amp hour lithium iron phosphate self-heating battery. This five kilowatt hour battery packaged in a 12 volt case is pointed directly at RV, bus life, van life, and large off-grid power systems that want big storage capacity without having to build their own custom battery bank. And honestly, this is the type of packaging and cells that I wish were available when I built my ambulance. For full transparency, so you know where I stand on this, Vatterer sent me this sample to test and evaluate. They are not paying me for this review. They do not get approval for this test and evaluation. They don't see it before you do. I view this as my job to stress test and evaluate this. And if I find a problem, I will tell you about it. So let's get some of the basics out of the way. This battery is 12 volts nominal and 460 amp hours which puts this roughly at 5.5 kilowatts of usable power. This uses lithium iron phosphate chemistry, which gives you a long cycle life without the overheating runaway fire potential of lithium ion polymer cells. One of the things I like about this company in particular is that they provide you with uh, graphs in the manual on how this battery will behave in different charging and discharging conditions. It's stuff that you would only get in a lab with proper equipment to measure those specs. It contains a 300 amp BMS that monitors the eight prismatic cells for voltage, temperature, and balance. The upper internal temperature limit for this setup is 167 degrees Fahrenheit. At that point, the BMS will say, we are too hot, it will disconnect the power and save your batteries. So the upper charge limit for this battery is 15 volts. That's where the BMS cuts in and says no more. And the lower discharge limit is 8.8 .8 volts. That's where the BMS will stop so that you don't uh, draw the prismatic cells too low and damage them. About 10 volts is a safe lower limit when you're setting your um, inverter up. Having a 300 amp BMS in this battery is important because it means this battery can handle large inverters, not just 12 volt lights and like charging a cell phone. At 12 volts, 300 amps is 3,600 watts of continuous power consumption, provided that your cabling and all your gear attached to the battery can handle that. To put that into everyday terms, most of your bench top, countertop appliances like a microwave oven or a toaster oven or an induction cooktop use somewhere between 1,000 and 1,800 watts. So you could run multiples of those at the same time from this battery, provided your inverter would handle it and the battery would just chug along. One of the standout features for me on this battery is the self-heating function of the battery. But some of you may be wondering, why is it important to heat your battery before you charge it? A decent analogy is imagine this lithium battery is like a library and the books in this library are electrical ions and the bookshelves where these books go are the electrodes inside each of the lithium cells. Now, when you are using this battery and pulling electricity out of it, you are pulling ions, pulling books off of those shelves and using them. Conversely, when you're charging this battery, putting electricity back into it, you are putting books, ions back onto those shelves. When the cells get below freezing, the chemistry inside the cells doesn't function like it does when they're warm. So when you apply a current, apply a charge to this battery, you're trying to put those ions back onto the electrodes they came off of. And because it's below freezing, the books in the library can't go back on the shelves. And so they end up sitting on the floor in front of the shelves. And the problem is they stack up and once they're there, they don't go anywhere. And so the more and more you charge with the battery frozen, the more these ions build up and they form these lithium metallic crystals, for lack of a better word, and they're in the way. So the battery won't 
won't stop working immediately, but over time, the more these lithium metallic crystals form, the less capacity the battery has. It just degrades the quality of the cells. So by warming the cells up first, by turning the heat on in the library, the ions can go back into the places they're supposed to go. You don't get that buildup of lithium metallic crystals inside the cells, and everything works correctly. To test whether or not this self-heating function worked, I took this battery out to my unfinished bus, which is a gigantic uninsulated metal box currently, and I left it overnight. When I woke up the next morning, the external temperature on this battery was about 21.6 degrees Fahrenheit, and the internal temperature was about 26.8, so still well below freezing. After connecting my 60 amp, char 60 amp charger, I noticed this battery was only charging at 8.3 amps, and what's happening is the BMS has recognized that this battery is too cold to charge. So instead of actually allowing the battery to charge, it turned on the three heating pads, one on each end and one in the middle, and that draws about 8.3 amps. And so I had to walk away for an hour and leave this battery to do its thing. And I came back and noticed that it had warmed up significantly. The internal temperature after about an hour showed to be about 45 degrees Fahrenheit. And now the battery was charging with about 47 amps. It's a, that's a really nice feature because if you do winter camping and you have this battery either stored somewhere that's not heated or really insulated and you apply a charging voltage and this battery does not have that feature, it'll just charge. And if you do that enough, it will eventually shorten the lifespan and the capacity of your battery. So with these, you have peace of mind knowing that that won't happen. This battery claims 300 amps continuous. All right, I have an inverter that can uh, provide a load that large. So I say we hook uh, my inverter up to it, pull a 300 amp load, and then I've removed the screws from this lid here so I can peer inside. And we will film the inside with a thermal camera to see if we have any hot spots to see how long can it handle 300 amps? Because it's rated 300 amps charging and discharging. So yeah, that's next. Let me walk you through the setup here. I just crudely connected my 4,000 watt inverter to the battery. Now this battery does not have a screen on the, on the front to look at, so I'll be using my clamp meter to uh, measure amperage power draw. This battery does have a really nice Bluetooth app, so I'm not really too concerned about the screen, because if you think about it, most of the time when you mount these batteries, they're tucked away in an area where you can't really get to a screen per se. For a load, I have three heaters <laughs> and combined if i turn them all on high this will pull over 320 amps so let's start with the smallest quietest heater and see how this goes this one should pull about 60 amps it's drawing about 63 amps on this small heater that's on high let's turn on our second heater here which is this large floor a radiator style heater now we have the fans kick on about 218 amps that's that's fairly reasonable that's a pretty good draw now if i go i do one click on the heat gun we're now at 287 amps 287 amps now it's it's kind of difficult to do this but i'm going to let this test run 224. Let this run for a few minutes and then we're going to check the, uh, the, the battery for hot spots with an infrared camera. We're at 12 minutes at 285 amps, so we're very close to the 300 amp threshold. I just measured the internal temperature and I saw that the, the cells themselves are staying nice and cool. The BMS and the wiring coming out of the cells was about 75 degrees C, that was the hottest point. Very warm to the touch, but I don't think it's damaging. Let me see if I can get us right up to 300. That's 305. So now we're at 303 amps. We're at the maximum. I'm gonna let this test run for 20 minutes to really see if this thing really can run 300 amps continuous. We're 10 minutes in and so far so good.
That was 25 minutes at 304 amps, above the maximum rated threshold for this battery. And in my opinion, it passed the test. Now there were some small uh, complications. Let's call them complications. The positive terminal on the inside got a little warm. It reached about 90 degrees Celsius on my thermal camera. And you'll have to forgive my thermal camera. It only reads out in Celsius, so I can't change it to Fahrenheit. While that is within the working temperature of these cables and lugs, personally, I would pull that lug off, clean it, and try to get that temperature a little lower. But the unit itself passed, passed the test just fine. The BMS didn't shut down, the BMS didn't overheat, the cells stayed nice and cool. And to be honest, real world scenario, I cannot personally think of a use case where I would hit this with 3,600 watts of power for 25 minutes. The only thing that I could think of that might consume that much power for 25 minutes would be a, like a large 12 volt air conditioner, or maybe if you're running a lot of electric heat, it just, in a normal scenario, even if you're using an electric appliance, like let's say you have a toaster oven, big enough to cook a pizza, they make some of those electric ovens to cook a pizza, or you have an induction cooktop. Most induction cooktops, at least the plug-in kind, pull between 1500 to 1800 watts. You could run an induction cooktop for an hour, pulling 1800 watts, and that is half the capacity, that would be 150 amps. And it would, this, this battery would chug along just fine. So unless you are running multiple dual induction cooktops and you'd have to have the inverter to power that, you'd have to have a big inverter to run both of them. I could not imagine putting a 300 amp load on this for a long period, enough to really get it hot. And to be honest, if I was going to have those kinds of loads, if I was going to have a big coach bus with potentially 300 amps of loads, I would want multiples of these units. If I kept it at 12 volt, if I wired them in um, parallel, they would share the load. So if I had three of these guys and they're wired in parallel, each battery would see 100 amps if I was applying a 300 amp load to that system. Conversely, if I wired them in series and raised the uh, voltage, if I had four of them and I was running a 48 volt system, that changes everything. Let me get this inverter disconnected and we'll talk about the packaging. Last week, I tested a different battery in this class of self-heated batteries with a different form factor. Now, the only benefit I saw to that specific battery was that it had a screen, a BMS screen, but that was mounted on the top of the box. And if you have this box shoved into a cabinet and you only have the face accessible, that doesn't help you much. You won't be able to see the screen, so then you're relying on the Bluetooth. And the Bluetooth works great. I love the app for this. It gives you a wealth of information. I really like the fact that these two terminals, they are recessed. They're tucked in down below. I'm not worried about knocking them off with something. And they have these nice covers. Now, they aren't multiple covers, so if you're connecting multiple cables, which I don't recommend, um, you can't really do that with these covers, but they do rotate so that you can run the cables out the side if you're daisy chaining batteries together in series. I do like those covers quite a bit. The handles on top of this thing, the handles are really robust and uh, they are confidence inspiring. And if you remember from my previous uh, testing video, I'll put a link up here. Uh, that was a problem I had. One of the, ha the handles on that previous battery were not confidence inspiring. They were adequate, but these, I, I can snatch this battery up and move it around and I am not worried about these handles coming off and this battery potentially hitting the floor. Another feature of this battery that I really like is this front panel here. There's four screws in this panel and that allows me to, to pull this panel off and get down and actually see the BMS directly. If I need to look at the BMS or diagnose something, it's right there in the front. That's really simple. And I also like the fact it's got a simple on off switch. I can turn this battery on and off with one switch. Now the fit and finish of the case is really good. This thing's built kind of like a big brick. It's got screws all around the top that allow you to take the top off. The cells themselves, 
I have scanned the barcode on one of these cells and it is an EVE power battery cell, lithium iron phosphate chemistry, 230 amp hours. There are eight of those cells. They are connected together in a 2P4S configuration, meaning two cells are put in parallel and then four of those groups are put in series. That gives you the 460 amp hours and 12.8 nominal volts for this battery. I also really like the fact that it's got three heating pads and three different temperature sensors so that the BMS knows what the temperature of the, of the cells are in various points in the case. I also like the fact that they used sealant on a lot of these threads and screws to prevent them from backing out. Notice the blue marks on the terminal post. That is actual a quality control mark where someone has torqued these down and then marked them to show that they have been properly torqued. I like the rugged finish, the, the rugged exterior. This reminds me, this is built tough like a piece of um, road gear for like a rock band. You know, the, the case and the handles look very much like something you would see on a, a road case full of amplifiers or guitars or something. It looks like a, like a professional commercial piece of equipment. One thing I'm noticing on this style of batteries is they don't have any feet. The, the bottom is just a smooth, oh, just a smooth piece of steel. And that's, uh, that's good and bad. If, if what you put this on is insulated, you know, that won't pull heat out of the battery. But as you can see from me moving this thing around, it does slide on this, this wood top and this metal top really easy. So you would definitely need to, to strap it down. I would do heavy ratchet straps, two across the top and maybe run across the front to the wall. Wherever you mount this thing, I would secure it to the frame. I wouldn't necessarily use wood. I mean, you can use wood to frame around it, but I would, I would want a, a 6,000 pound or 10,000 pound strap to hold it down. Cause in the, in the event of a wreck, if this was in an RV or a van, you don't want this hundred pound brick becoming a projectile. <laughs> that would be a bad day. So final thoughts, build quality, excellent. Uh, heating, self heating performance, great. It, it, uh, it took me a while to figure out how that worked, but once I understood it, uh, it worked fantastic. The fact that you can discharge and charge this sucker at 300 amps, that is really good. The manual is nice and full featured, giving you all of those charts. I love charts so that you understand how this thing behaves. I like the Bluetooth. I like the connectivity. I think this is a very good building block to use for building a high capacity 12, 24, or 48 volt storage system for your rig. You know, obviously if you're gonna do 48, you would need four of these. Now that is a large capacity storage system, but you could do two of these side by side, run them together in series and get 24 volts. And that would give you 24 volts at 460 amp hours. Now that would be a, a nice robust system. Not too terribly heavy, as long as you secure them properly. I like this solution. Now. If you have questions, comments, concerns, let me know in the comments. I have links to all this down below. I'm Jason. Thanks for hanging out with me. I hope you found this uh, useful, insightful. Maybe you learned a couple of things. I'll catch you in the next one.